Dear Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the third NATO Cyber Defense Pledge Conference. The way we work and do business changed a year ago with the arrival of COVID-19. Events such as the NATO Cyber Defense Pledge Conference scheduled to take place in Tallinn were naturally postponed. Since then, it has become evident that we may not witness a return to pre-pandemic conditions anytime soon. Hence, virtual meetings such as this one have become customary in helping us to stay connected and share our ideas. Our professional and social lives have moved from the physical world more into the virtual one. We should not forget that this creates more opportunities for our adversaries to exploit. Over the last year, we have registered a significant increase of malicious cyber activities in our countries. Let me take this opportunity to highlight the importance of our technology and cybersecurity experts in the public and private domains. They have worked under an increased workload to keep our online environment as safe as possible. Over the last year, particularly worrying where the attacks against healthcare services and research institutions working on vaccines. Cyber incidents against vital services and governments can result in serious outcomes. State-led actors continuously test and probe allies for security gaps. Sometimes it is by adversaries situated in our immediate neighborhood and sometimes by rivals across the globe. It is important to keep, keep in mind that cyberspace knows no borders and what could be considered a regional threat in conventional domain can easily become a global threat in the cyber domain. Last year brought progress in cybersecurity discussions on a global scale. In March 2021, all 193 nations reaffirmed their international law in particular, the Charter of the United Nations. This is applicable and essential to maintaining peace, security and stability in cyberspace. All nations would gain from a normative and predictable behaviour in cyberspace. It is important that all nations behave accordingly, but we must recognize that cyberspace is at the forefront of increased global competition and democratic nations must stand together against deviations from acceptable behavior. Exposing and condemning malicious cyber activities has become an important tool and we should continue finding further measures how to react proportionally. Since allies recognized cyberspace as a domain of operations and adopted the Cyber Defence Pledge in 2016, we have made good progress in mainstreaming cyber issues and integrating them into our overall strategy. Using the opportunity, let me thank Deputy Secretary General of NATO for this leadership and commitment in this regard. Our common goal is simple. We, as an alliance, must continuously improve our ability to defend our nations in the cyberspace, as in the air, on land and at sea. We should take advantage of opp opportunities to foster innovation and adopt new technologies. At the same time, we must make sure that the new technologies and their supply chain are secure from outside interference. We must also continue emphasizing the need for training and not just on the expert level, but also on the strategic decision-making level. The Locked Shield Cybersecurity Exercise, organized by NATO Cyber Defense Center here in Tallinn, just as we speak, is a good example. It offers national senior level decision makers the chance to test their readiness to manage crisis. It is realistic scenario integrates elements uh, of future co conflict. The Lock Shields exercise combines the well-needed civilian and military cooperation for cyber defense. We need to work closely with our international partners. 
NATO should continue to further cooperation with the European Union. Both organizations face similar issues. Both could provide complementary means to the member states to strengthen resilience and cybersecurity. We should also continue cooperating with our eastern partners, especially Georgia and Ukraine, to improve their cyber defense posture. Of course, our support to Ukraine today should extend far beyond the cyber domain. Russian military activities threatening Ukraine are of grave concern, and we are closely monitoring the situation. And last, we need to include our academia and the private sector to form a more comprehensive approach to cybersecurity. It helps us to close security gaps and improve our national cyber defense. It can also help us to broaden our horizon when thinking about possible threats in coming years. By defending our computers, networks and data, we are defending our freedoms and our way of life. Here, everybody can and should do its part. I am sure that coming together at this virtual conference will provide food for thought and plenty of ideas of how to ensure the Alliance's cyber readiness in the new decade. Soon, I hope, you welcome, I hope to welcome you all in Tallinn for future meetings, cooperation and conferences. Thank you. Thank you.